Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I wish I would have bought my book this year. Okay. that we haven't seen. You had two candidates. You had uh, Tilden, who was a Democrat from New York, and you had Rutherford B. Hayes, who was a moderate uh, Republican from Ohio, who basically cut a deal with the Southerners who were there. Heard on NBC, CNN, MSNBC. He's a New York Times best-selling author, and she has a new book out that really deals with the crux of the sentiment of the standard ground law in American society today, which is in 22 states, by the way. And her name is Attorney Lisa Bloom. Up to the present day, over 2 million people said, are you kidding me? This young man was shot and killed and there's no arrest. We demand an arrest. And there were public demonstrations in cities all over America, thank God. And hallelujah for all the people who did that and participated in that activism. And an arrest was made. Our justice system has many flaws, but requiring proof beyond a reasonable doubt is not one of them. So I gave the man the benefit of the doubt and I was prepared to hear the evidence. But as I said, I was shocked to see that there was very powerful evidence against George Zimmerman that the prosecution was not arguing. And I have the six biggest mistakes the prosecution made in the six months were about African Americans. 100%. I'm sure Carl will agree that in civil rights cases you don't often get evidence like that. And if you get it, you should use it. You should argue it. And they didn't. And very similarly in the Michael Dunn case, how many of you are familiar with Michael Dunn shooting at Jordan Davis in Florida? They call it the loud music murder case. Right. So in that case, Michael Dunn, we know, shot and killed 17-year-old Jordan Davis, also unarmed, shot into a car full of young people, 
After an argument over loud music, the jury hung on the top charge. Michael Dunn wrote explicitly racist letters from prison. He said, and I quote, the more I get to know those people, referring to African Americans, the more prejudiced I am. He said, more people should shoot and kill young black males because that would eliminate the threat. These are letters written from him in his handwriting from prison, not introduced into evidence at trial, at his trial by the prosecution, even though the defense introduced character witnesses that said he was gentle and peaceful. Whoa. Gentle and peaceful. We call that opening the door. And the prosecution should have been on their feet. All right, now I get to introduce these prison letters that show he is definitely not gentle and peaceful, that show he has racial animus against African Americans. Didn't happen. It didn't happen. So I, I think this topic is extremely important. That's why I wrote the book. I wrote the book to expose what went on in this case in the state of Florida. But I don't want any of us to be confused and think this is just the Trayvon Martin case or just the Jordan Davis case or just the state of Florida. California, for example, has stand your ground language in our standard jury instruction for self-defense. So in about half the states in America, self-defense is a mess in Florida and a lot of other places because of stand your ground. And I want to just do a brief uh, digression on stand your ground because I don't want to assume that everybody is familiar with it. And just very briefly, prior to 2005, the law... Uh, about 80% of white Americans test for moderate or severe racial bias against African Americans. About 50% of African Americans test for moderate or severe racial bias against African Americans. A deeply disturbing statistic. So I encourage you, by, if you're not familiar with this, by the way, to take the implicit bias test online. You can do it for free. It takes about 15 minutes. It's developed by Harvard University researchers. I have this to cite in my book. And this is, I think, the root of the problem. I would like to see a great deal of racial education for every participant in our criminal justice system so that the people who are making the decisions about who is an aggressor, who started the fight, who is the victim, who was hostile, have that level of education. Because the good news is, and there is hope, and I end the book on a note of way to listen to our comments. Thank you. Thank you. I will invite you back. Lisa, I promise I will invite you back. So I promise I will invite you back, and hopefully Charlie Brown and the new sheriff will show up with Charlie. Okay? Now, I'll just stop for just a second. He said 15 years ago, this started, and I saw the man who helped found this with me, and he was with me for the first year, walk in and out. Bob Carroll, 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 Bob